And as we study, and as we look at the background, that certainly is the case. Most commentators conclude today, if Paul had not been successful in the book of Galatians, of turning around a very thought, a whole culture, a whole idea, that the Christian church would not survive. That if the way it was going, and it wasn't turned around, we today would be worshiping here with our Yamaha son, and the women would be over here, and the men would be over there. That would be the way we'd be worshiping today if Paul had not been successful in pointing out to the Galatians that there was a big change needed. And the reason Paul had to write in this style, and he pegs the name himself, it was because of a group of people had entered into the Galatian church and churches and it's not that commentators have put this title. Paul put the title himself on Judaizers. It was because of the Judaizers. And he uses the word in the Greek that that's what it means. Judaizers. To live like a Jew. A Judaizer. It was the Judaizers. And actually in chapter 2 verse 14 is where he uses that term. By the way, I hope you have your Bibles open. We're going to go verse by verse through verse 11 through 24 today as we continue our summertime study on the book of Galatians. By the way, the book of Galatians, which I've explained to you over and over again, has been the, was the focus of the Reformation. Uh, what was the other book that was the focus of the Reformation? And guess what you start studying next week in your Sabbath school lesson? Was that planned or not? I, I didn't know that. It wasn't planned. But we're going to be looking at both Galatians and Romans this summer. You're going to be looking at Romans. So it will be a companion study. It will be a full understanding that the book of Galatians and the book of Romans have to turn the world upside down. All the reformations, I've shared this with you before, have been centered. For 1,200 years have been centered around those two books. By reading and understanding those books, people's lives have been reformed. Anyway, Judaizers. Let me give you a little more background to the Judaizers. A little more understanding to the dynamic that's going on when Paul has to write this letter. In the early days of Christianity, most, if not all, Christians were Jews prior to their conversion to Christianity. Now this map up here shows you and this, there's the boundary of the Roman Empire as it existed in 45 AD. And at 45 AD, you can see where Christians are reported to be. And it's yellow. And where do you see that? Where's the majority of Christians? Between Jerusalem and Sidon. And there were a few in Rome. Why would there be a few in Rome? Rome was the what? Capital. What would happen between Rome and its provinces on a daily basis? Going in Travel. There. Trade. Ideas. And so, most historians say in 45, most of your Christians were right in this area. Now, 45 makes the Christian church how old at this time? 15 about 15, yeah, about 15 years old. It's, it's a brand new church. And 98% of the Christians in 45 were former Jews. Jews. And you got to get that dynamic to understand what's going on when Paul's having to write this letter. Okay? And so the few who were originally Gentiles, such as Nicholas of Antioch, recorded in Acts 6.5, had converted to Judaism before turning to Christianity. So what was common with all the Christians? What was common with the Christian church in 45? Judaism. Jews. Now, understanding that, listen to this next. For these Christians, belief in Jesus as the Messiah of Jewish expectation enhanced 
but did not replace their Judaism. And here's the important point. Christianity was not regarded as a religion distinct from Judaism by these Christians, but rather as the truest form of Judaism. 